Welcome to the Mindset Evolution Podcast, powered by Self-Recoding, world-class consulting and coaching services that you can access at selfrecoding.com. Self-Recoding is a unique blend of neuro-healing modalities that will empower you to reach your full potential. Join thousands of others who have experienced rapid results in their journey of personal growth. Now enjoy our show where we bring you tools for a powerful mind with your hosts, Cassie Tate and Daisy Pup. And hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Bold and Blonde Mindset Evolution, the podcast that gives you tools for a powerful mind. I'm Kathy Tate, your host from Down Under, with me as always, your host from America, Miss Daisy Papp. Hi, Daisy. Hello, Miss Kathy Tate. <laughs> well, oh wow, I just heard my last name as well. So good to see you. So good to be ready to record another episode. What a journey and what a pleasure and what an honor to record another episode with you. What's up your sleeves? Well, up my sleeve today is the topic in love, question mark. Oh, okay. So it's a question. What does it mean it in love? What does it mean I'm in love? What does it mean when you tell me you're in love? Well, let's jump in then. What does it mean to you in love? What's your definition? So for me, I feel like being in love is somewhat different to feeling love. For me, the in love is something I feel for a partner. It's that feeling where you want to be with them, you want to share your life with them, you want to include them. When something happens, you think of them. It is, I guess, for me... A feeling of there being a real potential for a partnership in life and love. I feel like for me, being in love brings a lot of possibilities to the table around having a partner in my life, which is kind of been rare for me. There have been partners in my life, but I don't feel like any of them were the perfect fit because. I don't feel like I was in the right place at that time, although they weren't all disasters and I certainly learned a lot. For me, being in love means there's the possibility of a real relationship as opposed to just feeling love, which is something I feel that you can have for anybody in your life. So for me, they're quite different things. Thank you for sharing. Very valuable information here. And I can see that many of our listeners can relate to what you just said. I'd like to bring this to a different plane, to a different level and notch up a tiny bit. What if in love means that you're connected with love, behave in loving ways consistently, no matter who you are, are in contact with, and then you are the one being in love itself, the love itself, you're within love, and then you can differentiate. Of course, you feel maybe differently towards your grandchild, then you feel towards your child, then you feel towards your mother, then you feel towards a partner, then you feel towards a business partner platonically. Then you feel towards somebody who is your intimate partner, your monogamous, exclusive partner. But when you decide and choose and determine, just make this clear decision. From now on, I am in love. Not in love with you, not in love with Joey, not in love with Mary, not in love with anyone. But you are in, within love. And you'd conduct your life from that standpoint. Okay. I guess that in love for me means in love with somebody. I don't feel like that's what you're saying. Mm. What if we didn't get it right for all these years and decades and millennia? What if? So you mean maybe being in love with another person is not really what being in love is about? Okay. Let me give you 
a picturesque example. I'm in the shower or I'm outside of the shower. I cannot have it both, right? I'm either in or I'm out. I'm in the car or I'm outside of the car. I'm in the house or I'm outside of the house. I'm not talking about these little tiny time snippets when I'm just in between because I'm taking a step into the shower or out of the shower or into the car and out of the car or into the house and out of the house. But let's say, okay, I'm in the shower. Let's say the shower was love. So I'm either in and within that love or I'm not. And now I can feel infatuation towards people. I feel affection and attraction towards people on different levels, intellectually, philosophically, mentally, physically, sexually. Hmm? But when I am in the shower of love, to just give that as a picture, maybe it's easier than to understand my point of view that I bring in here just as an idea. Then once when I am truly in the state of love, I wonder what happens then. Because do I not then make much smarter decisions? Do I not then am much clearer when it comes to my goals, to my visions, my desires in life? Because how often is it that we are outside of love, out of love, not because I'm out of love with you, Many years ago, I wrote a song, Falling Out of You. And it's exactly about that when somebody's falling out of love with someone. I get the concept. But what if we had it wrong all the time? All these years, what if? What if it really is calling us to be in the shower or be in love and everything we breathe, everything we eat, everything we see, everything we hear, everything we do, everything we touch is soaked with that love. What if? What I feel like you're trying to say is instead of being in love with a person, be in love with life. Be in the state of love, not in the state of love with life. It is not something external that we are in love with, but being in the state of love. You opened that can, so it's your topic that you threw at me. And I understand this is a great conversation that we're having here because I can see that many of our listeners never ever thought about that. They just felt it. They just noticed it. And I'd like to give a little bit of a hint, an outside hint. It's a hint, but from a different angle. Five plus two, which really shows that it's possible to measure love because love, my definition of love, Love is not only a feeling or a phrase. Love is behavior. Now, when I'm consistently and persistently committed to behave in loving ways, everything in my life changes. Everything, every aspect, everything I do, everything I touch, everything I think. Sure. I guess the problem I'm having here is that for me, being in love is very connected to another person, whereas I don't feel like that's what you're saying at all. I think you have a good feeling about that because that's what I feel too. <laughs> because that would mean then that I'm depending on someone else outside of me, externally, to be in love. I can be in the shower all by myself or I can shower with my cat, my dog, my parrot. I can shower with my child. I can shower with my partner. I can, that's, I can shower with me, myself and I, but I'm in the shower. Now, when I am in love, in the state of love, in the field of love, in the energy of love, in that miracle of love, however you want to call it around the world, then that's an attitude. It's a state of being. It's a mindset as well, but it's also a heart set. Heart like H-E-R-A-T, not hard, something not soft. I understand this is an abstract concept. And I understand this may cause some of our listeners and maybe you, Kathy, to rethink and overthink and reevaluate all the relationships you had so far. What if? We've done an episode on love itself 
And we've spoken about love many times, not least because you've written a book on it. And I specifically want in this episode to talk about being in love from the point of view of meeting somebody and figuring out whether this is somebody you could be possibly be in love with as opposed to the initial attraction and feelings that you may get in the beginning because as you've said love is shown by behavior and that takes time to come out and so what I wanted this topic to be about was helping our listeners figure out from the meeting and those first feelings and we know that the first 90 days are not really the truest indication of what's going to happen later because we're in this honeymoon phase where everything is heightened and exciting and new and that I think makes those initial feelings of maybe being in love much greater, much more heightened. And I think that's possibly where I've made some of my mistakes is thinking that those first two or three months where everything is heightened and feels amazing means it's going to always be like that. And it very rarely is because things settle down and calm down and the relationship evolves as it gets older, as it passes the the two, three month mark and goes towards the one year mark, things do change quite radically. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. You've thrown me from left fields, bringing up being in love as a, a concept that has nothing to do with anything else. But what I wanted to try and speak about was to help our listeners figure out how they are feeling when they do meet somebody new and whether they've got the tools to recognise, am I in love or is this one of those just honeymoon periods where everything feels really good but it's not necessarily the right person for me long term? Okay, I hear you clearly. I think when we listen to our feelings solely, Because, oh, I feel this attraction. I'm feeling so attracted to this other human. That even indicates more of the pink glass moments when we are wearing the pink glasses or when we are in the honeymoon phase or the honeymoon mood, as I hear you describing it. When I am feeling in love with someone, what do I base that on? So I solely go because, oh, yeah, I feel this attraction and I'm infatuated. And then now we enter a relationship. That's why we have so many disasters around the world. Exactly that's the cause. And that's why I'm saying, okay, when you are in a mindset and in a heart set, having this attitude of being love, behaving in loving ways based on the five plus two, then you will know what to look in other people if they behave accordingly based on the five plus two. Once you make the five plus two your standard, And then meet somebody else who has the same standard when it comes to loving behavior, respect, admiration, consideration, dignity, empathy, having a word and following through in a timely manner. Now, when you consistently behave this way and the other human is behaving consistently the same way, not in the same ways, but according to the five plus two standard, and then you feel physical attraction and you feel infatuated, then you are first in the state of love. And then maybe you're falling for someone who is also in the state of love. And that is the recipe for lasting, content relationships. Yeah, I think that having that standard is something that's essential. I think for me, that would have helped me a lot. Me too. In knowing what was right for me. Yeah. So I do appreciate that. And I do encourage everybody to get the five plus two. It's a great resource. It's a great book. It really does hone home the things that should be most important to us, I think. I feel like all those feelings come first and then you've got to try and figure it out for yourself. 
I'm feeling all these things, which in my experience just hits you. And then if you don't follow some sort of standard, you just fall into a relationship without really thinking too much about it or having as much care about it as you could have. Whereas when you've got this set of standards, it gives you like a guide to make sure things are on the right track. Now, I say it like that because I've been caught in a couple of toxic relationships. Had I had this guide, that possibly would not have happened because it would have thrown back a red flag at me that I, in my in love state, ignored because I didn't really want the red flag. I really wanted the in love state. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important point because I'm sure I'm not alone in that one. (laughs) Certainly not. And what I see around the world happening, those who adapt and adopt the five plus two have very different qualities of relations in all aspects of their life. Relationships with friends, with the community, with the workplace, in the workplace, in their love life, in their marriages, in their committed relationships. Now, when I hear you say that it was quite helpful had you had the five plus two knowledge back in the days, then most likely the illusions of, yes, I want Joey because Joey is such a nice human. He has a little bit of a temper issue, throws temper tantrums, is rude to others, is aggressive at times, does not know how to respect others or me. And then I'm falling for the trap that I'm ignoring all that. I'm building up and out the illusion that, oh, Joey is mean and rude with everyone, but not with me. There will be an exception, me. Well, good morning, world. This is not going to happen. When somebody is a rude human to the janitor, is a rude human to me. If somebody is a rude human to a family, is a rude human to me. And why do you believe that you are so special that they will make an exception for you? Now, you are the one making the exception to stay away. Yeah, I would throw in there too that he might be making an exception for you right now, but it won't last. (laughs) If he's treating other people that way, then they're his true colors. Yeah. There you go. His or her. Yes. And then the question is, how loving is it that I'm putting up my pink glasses and I cover and hover and shower the other against all the signs of the red flags and make up for them and justify their rude, mean, aggressive, arrogant behavior? Because I have an illusion, I have that picture in my mind, this is what I'm expecting to happen instead of facing facts. So it's a self-betrayal. Now, therefore, I say when you are in the state of love, now that is then you are in love, in the state of love. And that is where you no longer will make up an illusion that is unhealthy for you and you will no longer ignore and justify other people's poor behavior. Everyone's behavior is their own choice. Everyone can choose their behavior. They can justify it from dawn to dusk and from dusk to dawn. It's unjustifiable to me because behavior is a choice, always. And I rarely generalize. So then therefore, when I am in love, I'm within it. That is when I can be based on my actions, my behavior, my thoughts, my goals, my desires in that state of love. And I'm not going to lose it or leave that state Because someone comes along who just looks so nice and charming and their smile is like the million dollar smile and their smell is just so absolutely fabulous as a fragrance to me and my hormones are taking me from earth to the moon and back, just to say a distance or a height. That is when I'm leaving love and that must stop, I think, to be able to absolutely start building healthy, loving relationships where I can be in love and remain in love, in the state of love. And then when I feel affection and attraction towards you, bingo, it's the best thing that can happen for you when you're looking for a partner. So if I'm right in what I think I hear you saying, you're saying that if we are ourselves in a state of in love, regardless of 
anything around us or anyone around us, then when we do happen to meet somebody who gives us those feelings, we're going to be in a much better position to know what we want, know if they're right for us, know if this could be a real love as opposed to an infatuation. Well, I think it is the other way around that first we must know what we want. In one of the last episodes, we spoke about the roof, the roof as the relationship. Do you want a flat roof? Do you want a two-story roof? Do you want a roof with windows? Do you want a chimney in the roof? What do you want? And only then look out and find or see who also wants that type of roof. And then when they are loving humans and you stick with love, you will not possibly be able to settle for less than a loving human based on their behavior. You can't. Why? Because then you are in love, not with yourself, that I'm not speaking about egotism. I'm not speaking about egocentric. No, none of that. But the state of in love, because otherwise it would be not being in love. How can I be possibly be in love with you when I disregard all my needs, my desires, my plans, my wish for a certain shape or form or style or type of relationship? How is that loving and to whom? Are you saying be in love with yourself first? I'm not saying that. I'm saying being in the state of love. Because when you remain in that state of love and you're not leaving that, then you will like you much more likely. And that is much more valuable than when you hear it from 10,000 people. I love you. I love you. I love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. There are many, many examples out there. You can go to John Belushi. You can go to Whitney Houston. You can go to many people in the film and industry and in the music industry who were loved by millions. And they may have felt that they were in love with someone or something, but they were not in the state of love because otherwise their lives would have been very different. Self-love is a different topic. We can speak about that. Mm. Yeah, no, I guess I'm confused because you're talking about being in a state of love. Yeah. Being the love, being love. What's your definition of love? That's number one. Being love. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the first definition that I would seek after. What is your definition of love? What is your friend's definition of love? And then have a look if there's common ground or not. And if there's not, how can you build bridges? And if there's no possibility to build bridges, then maybe it's a good idea to keep that loving feeling and that infatuation and this affection from a distance. Because you giving up yourself for what your gut tells you, yes, and who the butterflies and my body is reacting and the biology is just really in action and I'm so heated and so interested and I cannot really concentrate and focus on anything else. I think that is danger zone, is not it. You may win the lottery when you play. Chances are low. And I consider it's playing lottery when you follow your biology your hormones and your body's reaction and response. When you think, oh yes, they are so attractive. And then you start projecting and then you start making up a movie like any great movie producer. And you make that movie so beautiful. The problem is only that it's happening and playing in your mind and not in real life. And then comes the big disappointment because they, the object or subject of your desire, does behave in different ways. They want a different roof. They are not so big on monogamous relationships and there are many different aspects. Maybe they're not cleanly, maybe they're not organized, maybe they're sloppy, maybe they have potty mouth. There are many things that can bother in a relationship. But when you meet in love, then even at the end of any relationship, you can remain in the state of love and letting go. I think that's an interesting perspective. I probably hold slightly different views. I feel like those, I'm not sure what you called them, but those physical attraction, the biology, I think that's a necessary part yes. of figuring out the match. Yes. And although you're right about the assumptions and the perceptions, I think if we're aware of that, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go wrong. I think that if we take all that we've learned and 
keep that awareness with us, then possibly when the next biological thunderstorm comes along for me, I'm going to be in a much better place to evaluate whether they're the right person. And none of this is a simple, easy topic. And I think that out of everything that we face in life, figuring out whether a person is the right person for you and whether you can make a relationship successful with them is probably one of the greatest challenges humans will face. And with that in mind, it's no wonder that we're so confused by love. And then throw in that the word is just completely overused in our society. And misused. Everywhere. Overused and misused, yes. I think the overused is not a problem. The misused is much more dangerous than overused. Because when we overuse it in the right context, oh, lovely planet we're living on. Lovely environment on the planet, in our communities, in our in society. I say overused because I feel like it takes away some of its impact. But perhaps what I mean is overused and misused yeah. because it subtracts from the specialness of it if it isn't kept for those circumstances where you really mean it. I love this, I love that, I love coffee, I love my cat, I love my house, and that's great, but that's not really love, that's really like, isn't it? Well, the abuse and misuse of language is very confusing around the world, what I see and the few languages that I speak. And I see that many people are confused because they find it almost like cool when there's new slangs coming up where we say something that we don't even mean and we don't mean anymore what we say. That's very confusing. And I think when language is such a powerful utensil of life that I think it is just about time that we start defining the words we're using and become more sensitive to what we're really saying and what we are meaning and what we mean when we say specific things and how can we define it. Because the majority of humans that I come across and that I work with or that I meet have a hard time defining specific words. And then they try to justify, oh, this is so lovely. Well, give me five other words how you could explain to me or describe to me what you describe with lovely. Or when you say this is crazy, well, crazy, how is crazy? Since when is crazy something good? I understand in everyday language, it is considered being something good. But when we look at the origin of the word, it was not meant to be something good. And now that is why so many humans are totally confused because we don't even say what we mean and we don't even know what it means, what we are saying. And then therefore, I do believe that in love is just one part of that. The confusion of words, not knowing other words for it, the vocabulary shrinks around the globe. Why? Let's stop doing that. Let's find different words to speak precisely what you mean. There are so many words that can explain with tiny little nuances in difference that describe it a little bit more to the point. And I say this all from the state of being in love. I feel that it is just to the point what we spoke in this episode, to really question, what do you really mean when you say, oh, I'm so in love with Joey or with Mary or with ABC? What does it really mean? What is it really that you're trying to say? Does it mean, oh, my body is just on this roller coaster emotionally and physically and biologically and hormonally? Maybe that is much more precise what we mean when we say, oh, I'm in love. Well, I think that's how it starts. The physical part comes first. It's like nature going, here's a possibility, a real possibility, and your biology points at that. I feel, in my opinion, that's the first thing. And then comes all of the clever, smart, sensible thinking that needs to come next to make sure we don't mess up or confuse that first biological response with what it is we actually want 
what it is we actually need, what it is we envisage in a relationship. But I don't feel like the relationship part is possible if you don't have the first part. For me, the first part's essential. Otherwise, you could possibly have a relationship with anybody on the planet. What if it's the other way around? What if you see that they are loving people because they are in the state of love and you are and remain in the state of love and then start feeling affection over time? What happens to the girl who meets her sweetheart in sixth grade and then she's going to high school and he's going off to college or elsewhere and then they meet again when she's 20 and he's 21 and they are married for 30 some years. What's about that? So they were not physically and biologically infatuated because nature said, here you have a chance. Well, in that example, perhaps not. But that's a very different example of them meeting quite young and It's not something that I've had the pleasure of experiencing. In my experience, it's been quite different. But that's not to say that my experience is the only way it can go either. So mm. I don't think either of us is wrong. It's just my opinion that the physical, biological response, if traction is an essential component for me. Absolutely, yes. If I don't have that, then the rest is not possible. And for me, that part has usually happened first. That's where it's becoming slippery and dangerous, I think. Because let's say, I'm not telling you what to do. I never would. But let's say you do it the other way around and you have your standard and you keep your standard and then look out. When is your body in this group, within this group, responding to? Because then you shifted your standard to a very different plane and very different standard. And therefore, the results will be very different. Guaranteed. Now that I can get on board with. Voila. This was <laughs> it for today. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. We would love to know what you guys think, our listeners, about love, being in love, being in a state of love, being ready for love, not wanting love, anything that you have an opinion on around love, let us know. Go visit us at baldandblonde.live. There's a contact page. Also, let us know if you'd like to hear us talk about a different topic, something that we haven't covered yet. We love your feedback. Please, as always, support us. We need your help to stay on air. And while you're on the internet browsing, go to selfrecoding.com and check out Daisy's, not only her packages for coaching, but also her workshops. They are truly amazing and will help any organization and their people. That's it from us today. We are thrilled to bring you another episode and we'll be back next week with, I don't know, something else I've got up my sleeve. <laughs> That's it from us. We are Bold and Blonde. Mindset Evolution. Talk to you next time. Thank you for listening in to the Bald and Blonde Mindset Evolution podcast. Please share our show with your family and friends. Together, we make this world a better place for you, for us, for future generations. When you need consulting or coaching, visit selfrecoding.com. Also, please remember to rate us five stars and leave a review and support us at baldandblonde.live. Talk to you soon.